Dr. Ilza Fenter has just completed her community service year in rural Free State. Her six-year degree was heavily subsidized by government, but she's not going to work in South Africa. She's about to become one of almost 2,000 South African doctors who've left their country of birth to live and work in Canada. Cynical in the Eastern Free State, where government doctors are scarce. The town's hospital has no permanent doctors. Medical students doing community service are the only way out. State clinics here are even worse off. They have to share the hospital's doctors. Most are lucky if they have a doctor once a week. We need more doctors. Maybe if they can give us here at the clinic one doctor who will do sessions every day. Because there's only one doctor who comes here once a week on Tuesdays only and for two hours only, and the patient suffers really. But doctors don't want to settle here. They find it too rural and often unfulfilling. This year, Dr. Ilza Fenter and two colleagues were the town's only medical hopes. They worked as community service doctors in Senegal. It's very good for the community. They really need us, and I can see that I've helped people. But for me as a person, as a doctor, it hasn't brought any experience. Because there are only three doctors, Dr. Fenter is on call 80% of the time. But Senegal is a small place with few emergencies. She mostly spends her working time waiting for something to happen. So that means that 80% of the year you are in Senegal, you have to be here. You have no other place to go, no other things to do. Most patients visiting Senegal's state hospital are poor. They can't afford medication, and the state doesn't have enough money for all the medicine that's needed. It makes Dr. Fenter's job difficult. She wants to help, but often can't. It's very unfulfilling, because you learn practically in books what to give to people but you, can't, um, you cannot give it to them because it's government, they don't have the medicine, or the people can't pay because we've got a system if um, some of the drugs, they can give um, some of the drugs if they pay a certain amount extra. And the, the people just can't pay. Seven out of 10 of Dr. Fenter's patients are HIV positive because getting to hospital costs money most of them only come when they're already very ill. Dr. Fenter doesn't have anti-AIDS drugs to give them. Seven out of 10 patients we see, or I see, has got this disease and you can't do anything else for them. And that is very unfulfilling. Yeah. It's not only AIDS patients she can't help. Hospital staff deal with crime victims every day. We see the consequences of crime every day. Gunshot wounds, stab wounds, rape cases, and it's terrible. So you, you get to see these consequences of the violence every day. So you live with it. Dr. Fenter earns 12,000 rand a month. From this, she has to pay off a 70,000 rand study loan and her car and buy food and pay rent. In South Africa, it will take her almost as long as she studied to pay back her loan. By the time she's finished paying, she'll be 33. But she's made another plan. She's going to live and work in Canada. I will earn about six times more in Canada as I would as a medical officer in South Africa. So it will take me approximately four or five years working as a medical officer in South Africa to pay back that loan, as would the same in one year in Canada.
Canada doesn't only offer a bigger salary. All Dr. Fenter's travelling expenses will be paid, and she'll receive an extra allowance for working in a rural town. Most of her student friends will do the same. In my circle of friends, we are about 15 people that's leaving South Africa. Not necessarily for Canada, but for other countries in next year. And um, that's only in my circle of friends. I know a lot of people, um, other people, friends of friends, that's also leaving. Dr. Fenter will be going to Fort St. James, a small town in the north of Canada, where it's winter for most of the year. It's the cynical of Canada. Local doctors find it too remote. But this hasn't deterred physicians like Dr. Fenter. For the past six years, all the doctors in Fort St. James have been South Africans. Just relax there, okay? Mm -hmm. We would be in dire strait if it wasn't for the South Africans. If that is any, indi any indication, there's only one uh, Canadian graduate doctor showed up here in the last six years. Um, didn't stay very long, and uh, so, yeah, if, if it wasn't for the South Africans, I think we would definitely be in, in serious difficulties here. Two-thirds of Dr. Fenter's studies were subsidized by government. It's cost the state 200,000 rand. Canada, and not South Africa, will now benefit from this investment. But she believes her one-year internship and another year of community service have settled her debt. I don't really feel responsible for leaving South Africa, the country that has subsidized me. I have studied for six years and was forced to work for the government for two years. I was forced to, to take a big study loan as well. Dr. Fenter doesn't intend moving to Canada permanently, but most of those who left before her have stayed on. They're raising their families in remote Canadian towns and have applied for citizenship. In the process, desperate towns like Senegal have been abandoned in exchange for what many doctors perceive as better living and working conditions. It could be a gathering in one of Johannesburg's northern suburbs doctor's dinner-time conversation in Afrikaans. But it's not on South African soil. It's an evening in a small town in northern Canada. <laughs> Five months after our previous visit to Dr. Ilse Fenter, Fort St. James has become her new home. It's actually great because um, the doctors know where we come from. They know the medicine we are used to. Um, they are guiding us um, in what we do. They have lot, lots more of experience. The one doctor has been here for 16 years already and the um, other doctor is for two years and they are planning on staying here forever. All the doctors here are South African. They've been vigorously recruited by the Canadian Health Department because few local doctors want to work here. Dr. Fenter is earning the equivalent of up to one and a half million rand a year. On top of this, she's also received a 60,000 rand signing bonus and 108,000 rand for coming to work in a rural town. They're coming in a time where we're very short of doctors. Uh, the, uh, the ones that been, uh, came to the small towns, they, they love small towns, they really get involved into the community, uh, having their freedoms, you know, be able to, to do whatever they want, whenever they want. Uh, having you know a dollar that it's uh, six times more than their uh, rents uh, and make them very very happy. Dr. Fenter works with four other South African doctors. In South Africa, she used to see AIDS patients and crime victims. She now mainly sees patients with common complaints like colds or skin rashes. She can give them all the medicine they need because the state pays for everything. <laughs> The availability to medicine is a big difference than in our country. If the people, if, if you need to give your patient some meds, um, you can give it, yeah. 
it's much more available. They can get everything they need. Um, as in South Africa, it's not that easy. But Dr. Fender has left behind a country in desperate need of doctors. One that's paid two thirds of her studies and needs her skills. In some rural areas in South Africa, there's only one doctor for every 100,000 people. And so if they pay you 10 times, and there are people dying in South Africa who need your skills, what do you do about that? It is not money that's going to heal the South Africans who need your skills. It is your expertise, it is your knowledge, it is your understanding of the situation of your own competitors, your own people in South Africa, that I think really must be the driving force that says, I have to work in this country. But doctors who've left believe their community service and internship paid for what the country invested in them. They don't feel guilty. Dr. Leon de Val has lived in Canada for eight years. He doesn't plan on returning to South Africa, ever. If you've done your time, how much do you need to give? You know, if, so I, I, I don't see a problem there. I don't see it as being immoral to, to choose a better future. I see it as an immoral situation that exists at the moment, and if somebody decides to get out of that, then that should be their choice. Some say the Canadian government is stealing South Africa's doctors. It's offering money the South African government can never match. A rich Commonwealth country is using the resources of a poorer member for its own benefit. We're not comfortable with that. Uh, as a member of the Commonwealth, we have been discussing these issues and trying to find a way in which we can sign contracts with them. We're not wanting to stop doctors from going abroad, but we want to work out a mechanism by which at least the developed countries can also understand our position, our plight. But, the Canadians say, the problem lies with South Africa. I don't believe that someone leaves their country of birth and where they've grown up just because somebody walks in and says, come and work for me. I think that decision has been made before they start looking for a job abroad. And as long as that decision has been made, then I'm going to do everything I can to encourage them to come and work for us as opposed to go somewhere else in Canada or another country such as Australia. Um, am I poaching? I, I don't believe so. I think the question needs to be asked of South Africa, why are your doctors leaving? And maybe they start, they need to look at home first before they start blaming us. Doctors say their concerns go further than working conditions. They don't see a future for their children and they no longer feel safe in South Africa. When you're removed from that situation, you're actually forced to look at things like uh, people killing one another for no reason. And you have to see that as a problem. Whereas if you live in South Africa, it becomes part of the daily routine. You pick up the paper and you read 20 people killed and you turn over and you read the comics. It's just better options, yeah. Mm. Things are, the basic things that you need to live, <clears throat> safety, future prospect, Ability for you to, you know, leave your wife. Uh, if she doesn't get work, you know, she can leave her at home and she'll be safe. You can come back. That things, that's not there in South Africa anymore. Many believe South Africa's public health care system is a shambles because of an unequal distribution of money in the past. Something we all need to help repair. I'll just urge them to have a little bit of new patriotism in this country. Because I think all of us are being called upon to, to do whatever we can to build this nation into a nation of the first world. And I think we have the capacity to do so. Uh, I think all of us have got a responsibility to do so, particularly if you've been subsidized by the taxpayer's money. Yeah. Almost all the South African doctors in Canada are white, but they say politics in the country has had nothing to do with their decision to leave. I haven't heard one doctor say that. I have heard them say that they couldn't sleep at night because they were afraid of somebody breaking in and, and harming their, their kids, of being afraid when, when their wives had to go and work somewhere that they wouldn't come back because they would be hijacked. I really haven't asked that question. I, maybe I'm naive. It didn't occur to me that that would be a basis for moving. 
Most of these doctors don't share the kind of patriotism our health minister is demanding. I must be honest, I don't think I owe them anything. I'm honest when I say I don't think I, I owe South Africa anything. It's my home country and I love my country. I will go back just because that's how I feel. But I don't think I owe it to them to stay there and work there. If they make the conditions for us better, I, will, I, I would have stayed there with pleasure. Close to 2,000 South African doctors live and work in Canada. In some provinces, one out of three medical officers is from South Africa. They're in demand because of the high standard of their medical training. The majority of them stay on. The desperately needed skills of doctors like Ilze Fenter may evade her country of birth forever. <laughs> 